welcome back so in this video we are going to talk about uh the ruby virus that's the rubella virus so in the previous video we discussed uh about the toga viruses and this ruby virus is one of them so you can go there and uh watch that video first just to click the link on the top right corner and you will find the introduction to the uh, toga veride and we also discussed about the arboviruses which belong to the to that family right so the rubella virus belong to the toga veride family uh it's positive sense single stranded rna virus uh it's um uh, uh, replicate in the cytoplasm this ruby virus is not an arbovirus because it only uh infect humans right so on mode of transmission there are two main ways firstly respiratory secretions um and secondly transplacental so it means a uh, vertical transmission this virus can actually cross the placenta so it's one of the torch infections uh, do you still remember the torch infections okay let's review them toxoplasma gondii others and others include uh, treponema pallidum which causes syphilis uh, varicella zoster hiv parvo b19 and also listeria monocytogens and rubella of course the one which we are discussing in this video uh, cytomegalovirus and hep simplex virus now let's talk about the clinical features rubella is also known as german measles in 50 percent of the cases it is asymptomatic uh, so young children have far milder course than older children and adults so it means older children and adults uh, they present with prodromal symptoms uh, and other systemic complaints like arthritis and uh, of course the duration of infection is a little bit longer so we can say a rubella infection can be grouped into two groups a rubella in older children and adults this one is one group and secondly congenital rubella syndrome right so here let's discuss about the clinical features in older children and um, adults all right so it is two main phases prodromal phase and the exanthem phase the prodromal phase first incubation period is usually two to three weeks after infection and it lasts uh, from one day to five days uh, and the findings include the following please pay attention number one post auricular and sub occipital lymphadenopathy secondly low grade fever mild sore throat conjunctivitis headache and um, joint pain then the third sign is forchima sign all right so this is just an in inanthem of the soft palate inanthem simply means a rash which is uh like uh on the uh, mucosa right that's what it means to say inanthem okay moving on uh on exanthem phase this phase is it lasts for two to three days now you need to pay attention the rash caused by measles it usually lasts uh, up to six days but for rubella is three days so uh this rash caused by rubella virus can also be called a three-day rash three-day rash not six day six day is for measles okay and the findings include number one uh that rash is fine non-confluent pink maculopapular rash right and this rash it begins from the head and descends down specifically it starts like uh, from behind the ears right so it goes down like from top to bottom and uh as it spread it does not uh, affect the palms and sores right and sometimes in uh, in adults it can be itchy right above that uh in adult girls or in, in, in young women uh, it causes um, polyarthritis 
polyarthritis. Now let's look at treatment. Unfortunately, we can only treat the symptoms. So uh, if there is severe pruritis, uh, we can give antihistamines. If there is severe uh, polyarthritis, we can urge the patient to rest and give NSAIDs. Now let's talk about prophylaxis. We actually have a vaccine for rubella, right? It's a live attenuated virus, or we can say vaccine is correct. Uh, so this vaccine is a combination. It's an MMR vaccine, meaning measles, mumps, and rubella, right? So uh, there are three doses given to children. First, the first dose is given uh, between 12 to 15 months of age. The second dose is given between six, four to six years of age. And the third dose, uh, pay attention here, is given at 14 years of age. But we are targeting something here. For girls, we will be targeting mainly rubella. If you still remember, I said polyarthritis is mainly in those young women, right? Yeah, so it mainly affects uh, girls after this age of 14. Um, then on boys, we are targeting mumps, right? Okay, we will talk about mumps later. But for now, just know this. At 14 years of age, for girls, we are targeting rubella. And for boys, we are targeting mumps. Now we finished a discussion about... Uh, a rubella in older children and adults. At this period, let's talk about uh, congenital rubella infection. Okay, congenital rubella infection. Firstly, we need to talk about the risk. Uh, in the first trimester, the, re the risk is usually about 90%, uh, especially between first to 11th week of gestation. This is because around this period, this is when uh, organogenesis takes place, right? So there is a high risk of congenital rubella at this point. Secondly, uh, between 16 to 20 weeks of gestation, uh, the risk is low, usually less than 1%, right? And after 20 weeks of gestation, uh, we can say it's safe because there are no documented cases. Now let's talk about the clinical features of congenital rubella. Firstly, there might be a miscarriage, preterm baby, or fetal growth restriction, right? And uh, congenital rubella, it is, it is a triad of symptoms, right? And the triad goes like this. Number one, congenital cataracts. Number two, cardiac defects, mainly patent ductus arteriosus and stenosis of the pulmonary artery, and cochlear defects. So this triad represents the three main symptoms because we do have uh, some non-specific features which can be grouped into two groups. We have early signs and late signs. Early signs include blueberry muffin rash, Right, so this is caused by extramedullary uh, hematopoiesis. We also have hemolytic anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, and jaundice. The late signs include uh, the central nervous system defects like microcephaly, intellectual disabilities, and panencephalitis. Now let's look at how we can prevent congenital rubella syndrome. Right. Uh, firstly, we need to know that all seronegative women uh, should be immunized before pregnancy. And what it means is that all women at childbearing age, uh, they should be immunized. Secondly, if there is a case uh, which is being suspected, Expected to be the congenital rubella syndrome, uh, it should be reported uh, to local health authorities because it is a nationally notifiable condition. All right. Uh, in some cases, we might have uh, like intrauterine infection. If it is the case, then 
there are two options. Firstly, uh, if the pregnancy is less than 16 weeks, it means uh, we need uh, to cancel the parents and to age them to abort, to terminate pregnancy, right? But if it is uh, greater than 16 weeks, as I said before, the risks are low and maybe it's, it's less than 1%. So just a reassurance because, you know, we have 1% uh, risk. The child may be okay or the child may uh, later on uh, present some defects of congenital rubella syndrome. Okay, thanks for watching. If you find this video interesting, please, you know my story. Just hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment on the comment section. Until next time, head bowed.